Uh, now to another important figure. Uh, early last year, um, this is how Elijah Cummings concluded a House hearing with Trump's former fixer, Michael Cohen. People are use, now using my words that they took from me, that didn't give me any credit. We are better than this. We are so much, we really are. As a country, we are so much better than this. I tell my, 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 my children, I say when bad things happen to you, do not ask the question, why did it happen to me? Ask the question, why did it happen for me? I don't know why this is happening for you, but it is my hope that a small part of it is for our country to be better. Um, those words brought me to tears. We are better than this. Um, and they're also now the title to the late Congressman posthumous memoir, We're Better Than This, My Fight for the Future of Our Democracy, which weaves personal stories in with the political drama of doing battle with the Trump administration as the then head of the House Oversight Committee. Joining us now is the late congressman's widow, Maya Rockimore Cummings. Maya, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to see you. Well, I'm so glad so that... I'm so glad that you worked on this project, on putting together this book. Tell us about it, um, because it does involve a lot of conversations with Elijah before he passed. Hours upon hours of conversation. So uh, the last year of his life was basically dedicated to making sure that he shared this, what I call his love letter with the American people. He wanted to make sure that Americans understood what's at stake in this election year. And Elijah believed firmly that Donald Trump wasn't just the wrong person for the position. He believed that he was a direct threat to the people and to our system of government. Uh, and so his call that we're better than this is to not just find common ground in this election season and beyond, but to find higher ground that we actually need to come together as a nation to defeat this, uh, this president. Uh, because he does not have the capacity nor the will uh, to ensure that our democracy sustains and, uh, the test of time. A lot of people didn't know Elijah was sick. And in fact, when um, you and he was at our wedding, he officiated our wedding, you said he doesn't want to talk about it. He's just so glad to be here. Um, but there were times, uh, especially with President Trump, where he was deeply hurt, um, personally hurt by the president. And, and you talk about that. Can you tell us what that was like and why that mattered so much to him, you know, as compared to the actual physical pain that he was in? So Elijah was a man that rose above party politics. He believed that you could get to know anyone on a personal basis, and that could serve as the uh, the opportunity to do good things on behalf of the American people. And so in 2017, despite everything that had happened in the election of Donald J. Trump, Elijah reached out to him. Uh, we went to his inauguration. Uh, we went to a White House meeting. Uh, and he met, he met with Donald Trump and asked him to work on lowering prescription drug costs for the American people. And Donald Trump basically went out of the meeting, lied, and turned his back on him. So Elijah then, mm. of course, expected Donald Trump to start uh, attacking him. And he did. Uh, you know, a year later, he was attacking Baltimore and Elijah because of all of the investigations that Elijah had to manage that were coming out of the scandals that were coming out of the White House. Uh, and so it hurt Elijah deeply. I think it facilitated his death. And I think that, you know, certainly I think the president understands that his words have impact and import. Uh, and he deliberately attacked Elijah in the city of Baltimore because he was trying to undermine Elijah's effectiveness and his leadership. Hey, Maya, it's Willie Geist. I can't believe it's been almost a year since Congressman Cummings yeah. died. Our ongoing condolences to you and your family. Um, Thank you, Willie. I was thinking about um, John Meacham, who's written the book about John Lewis, said John Lewis's last words to John Meacham were, keep the faith, keep the faith, that he remained hopeful right up until the end about the country. Um, what was Elijah's message to you and to the country in his final moments? How did he feel about where we are as a country and where we could go? 
It's this book, and that's why I encourage everyone to pick it up. Uh, it is a treatise on how we have been better in the past, how we've risen to an, as a nation, how we've unified to overcome all kinds of obstacles, and that we can do it again. We can overcome this administration, its mendacity, and certainly its corruption. Uh, and so with that, this message, this book, is Elijah's final message to me and the American people about where we need to go. Uh, and I certainly want to emphasize that it's up to the American people. He wanted the American people to be the heroes in the story because they have the power, through the power of the ballot, to change this narrative and preserve our democracy and our republic for future generations. Maya, thank you so much uh, for bringing this to us and for being on today. Congressman Elijah Cummings' posthumous memoir is titled, We're Better Than This, My Fight for the Future of Our Democracy. Thank you so much. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.